So we'll start um, talking about, I want to get into the technical and of course the financial aspects of the Bitcoin bond. But uh, let's start with the technical aspects. There's a lot of listeners and watchers who will you know, not be familiar with the liquid network or not fully, you know, have understand how it works. Uh, and it is a very important uh, part of, of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ecosystem at this point. Uh, the Bitcoin bond is tokenized and issued on the liquid network. Uh, Adam, I'd like to just give us a, an overview for those who don't know much about how the liquid network works um, and how in particular this bond is tokenized. Right. So uh, a lot of people are familiar with uh, Lightning and Liquid is effectively another a layer two for Bitcoin. And uh, things you can do on Liquid. So it's it's uh, Lightning is a way to do faster and cheaper Bitcoin transactions. And ultimately, every Lightning transaction is a kind of delayed settlement Bitcoin transaction. So it will only do what Bitcoin can do, where Liquid is a sidechain, so it can add new opcodes and features, and it, it does that. So as well as being able to transact Bitcoin in it, it looks very Bitcoin-like in terms of you know the user experience with a wallet, um, the the workflow, you know, post addresses around and things like that. It has a number of other features. So it has confidential transactions. So the amounts and types of assets in transactions are encrypted. So only the sender and recipient can see them. And nevertheless, the kind of cap or you know everything adds up in terms of the inputs and outputs to a transaction is verified with compact zero knowledge proofs basically and then it has support for assets so uh, user issued assets and a special type of type of user issued asset which is the uh, blockstream amp service which is a um, a a way to sort of manage securities so it's a multi-sig and then you know there can be rules implemented on a on a server that is some kind of policy like you know maybe this asset is available only to us investors or only to european investors or only to investors who are qualified or who have provided kyc and things like that so liquid amp is a is a tool to do that kind of thing but you can use it as a tool to program other things and so there's something called a blockstream mining note which is a, a securitized luxembourg securitized 2000 terra hash mining instrument that's uh, issued by Blockstream. And that, that works using Blockstream AMP. So people who are familiar with that will know how it works. And then the El Salvador Bitcoin bond is also proposed to be an AMP asset. So running on Liquid, same kind of user experience. You can also, uh, you know, store these assets on a hardware wallet and, you know, use a green platform or some other wallets like uh, Siteswap and Spectre and other wallets have support for Liquid as well as uh, Ledger and so on. So there's various integrations. A number of exchanges have Liquid support so that you can... You know, another common asset that's on Liquid is a number of stable coins. So Tether, uh, Bull Bitcoins, LCAD, which is a Canadian dollar stable coin, and, and, and more. So uh, Siteswap has a, a Euro stable coin on liquid so that's uh, liquid i think one of the common and interesting features is sort of atomic swaps trustless orders that kind of thing so side swap is a is a liquid wallet and a swap marketplace for liquid assets so i'll pause there so it's a federated system uh how many i guess uh members of the federation are on the network now uh, I think something like 60. So a lot of different exchanges, financial institutions, uh, mining pools, prop trading companies, you know, all, all kinds of different entities, basically. And so it's the network. I mean, Blockstream is a technology provider. The network is operated by the participants. And, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's federated, I think people tend to, you know, assume too much control in its... In its uh, in its day-to-day -day operation, you know, you can transact, nobody's asking you to sign up for anything, zero sign up, you know, same experience to set up a Bitcoin wallet, hardware or software. The difference is the, there is no mining. And so the blocks are processed by block signers. And you know, there's a subset of these 60 members have block signers. They sign the blocks, but as we found out, you know, as everybody found out or learned from the block size uh, debate some years ago and the resolution to that, 
that ultimately it's the asset owners and the value in the chain that sets the rules in the chain. So, you know, ultimately if there was a tussle between the block signers and the asset owners, the asset owners could fire the block signers and coordinate to bring some new block signers in. And uh, I think some more, more factors kind of provide a trade-off as well, which is due to the confidentiality, it's very, it's much harder to selectively interfere with transactions, to block them, to front run them. You know, if you don't know what the transaction is or the, or the swap or the trade settlement is, you can't front run it because it's all encrypted or you can't usefully front run it if you don't know what it is. And the other thing that, you know, the finality is fairly fast because blocks are on a one minute interval and the consensus algorithm is not probabilistic as it, you know, it's necessarily probabilistic on Bitcoin, but here there are block signers, so it doesn't need to be probabilistic. And so it's final after two confirmations. I mean, typically it's final after one, but you know, there, there's some kind of esoteric race condition that could occur. I don't think it's ever actually occurred in practice. So after two minutes, it's final. So, you know, unless you catch something in two minutes, it's too late. So that's far too fast for, you know, human judgment, basically. So uh, that's the pan. I think the other thing is to bear in mind that the assets on Liquid can't be, you know, removed and sent to another chain or something because they were natively issued on the chain. So the only funds at risk from the Federation block signers in, in a kind of, you know, two thirds uh, block signing majority for uptime and kind of security are the Bitcoin pegged in and the Bitcoin are primarily used for uh, fees because right? it's a Bitcoin layer. The fees themselves are in Bitcoin or liquid Bitcoin. And so those funds are managed sort of in an automated way. So the, the block signers are actually hardware security modules. And so each of, each of the companies running these things is put in their, you know, in their exchange security place where they store their secure exchange servers, they put an extra piece of hardware. And so a second line of defense is that to actually compromise the system, a majority, you know, a large portion of this network would have to, um, you know, succeed in tampering with the hardware and have the intent to steal from the users. And I guess another sort of secondary defense is we know, who, you know, everybody knows who they are because it's a, it's a, a group of companies. And so they have skin in the game in, you know, mm -hmm not not ripping off their customers not hurting their reputation and in being able to continue to rely on and use liquid so i think it's a sort of trade-off point you know somewhere between if if you put funds on a single exchange now of course the exchange could run into solvency issues or you know go offline and storing it in your own wallet on the main chain of course that's the most bearer and uncensorable and final thing so it's somewhere yeah. in between those i think you know bitcoin stored in a liquid network uh far safer than storing in a custody of one exchange um, because you know any any given you know one two three exchanges could you know go offline or be malicious and you wouldn't be impacted so that, that's the country off yeah so it, it's pegged to bitcoin so it'll you know basically it's underlied by this the reserve asset of the system but you're making okay. some you know trade-offs in terms of like the security model of the base layer to make liquid more amenable to supporting something like a financial instrument, like, um, like the Bitcoin bond. And you've been running your own financial asset, right? Um, the, the mining notes, uh, on the liquid network for a while now. Yeah. So we started the first sales tranche back in March this year and the, uh, the go live date was uh, early July. So it's been running for five months now and has mined you know, the dashboard here, uh, about 2.2 Bitcoins to date. And yeah, so it, 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 prov like the, the financial, the, the blockstream mining note is it gives you the economic rights to the Bitcoins mined by 2000 terahash over a three year period. And, um, so, you know, the original uh, offering price was 200,000 euros, but it's gone up, you know, both due to uh, kind of input costs and tapering over time pre-market discount and the value of the Bitcoin that it's mined today increasing as well. So okay. the tranche, tranche 7 was sold uh, recently, like a week or so ago, and that one was at 320,000 euros. But you have to bear in mind, you know, with... Um, to Bitcoin in it, 
you're looking at say we're like call it fifty seven thousand over one point one three. Yeah, there's like about 110,000 euros worth of Bitcoin in there as well, right? So that's part of the makeup of the instrument. And, you know, uh, they're all fungible as well, the different sales tranches. So what we do is we mark it by Bitcoin. So as we add more hash rate, we add as much Bitcoin as the existing units have mined at the, you know, switch on moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that makes them all fungible. Okay. So then the... I guess the the benefits of of the note then are paid out on the liquid network in LBTC. So if I have you know if I earn a certain amount uh, from the two thousand terahash mining activity on my note, how do I get paid? Uh, so actually, this it's not paying dividends; it's rolling up. So it's a kind of prepaid, you know, it's a kind of term investment. So you put you, you prefund it. You know, you don't pay fees monthly for, for the power, you don't get a dividend for the Bitcoin, Bitcoin rolls up inside. And we, we chose to do it that way because of uh, some complicated modeling that we, we've been doing mining for a few years and we noticed that it's actually more profitable. You know, if you've got a certain pot of money in a certain income stream, it's actually more profitable to go smaller and not sell Bitcoins to pay for the power because, you know, when, when the price goes down and the hash rate goes down, you mine a lot of bitcoins those extra bitcoins are what really count and then sure. you know, if you if you get through a cycle and the price comes up again that will save the day and so you know we we did some mining through a period where you know if you if you model what if we had bought bitcoin at the beginning and it was over two years and you know the beginning of bitcoin price was fifteen thousand. at the end the bitcoin price was about seven thousand seventy five hundred so if you'd bought Bitcoin, you'd be down 50%, but we were up 25% in dollars. So we were like, well, how did that happen? And how it happened is the price fell all the way down to 3,500. So that kind of gives approximately when this was happening a few years ago now. And, um, you know, so we, we mined far more Bitcoins than we expected. In fact, two and a half times as many, right? So even though the price was half, we've mined two and a half times as many Bitcoins as one might have expected. And so we end up with a 25% dollar uh, increase over that period and so the lesson and then and then you know prior to doing the bond we went and back tested all 36 month mm -hmm. periods on a you know monthly basis mm -hmm. and worked out the average return and that the strategy was a good strategy so we we baked it into the bond and we also wanted to encourage people to you know not spend the bitcoins as they come off so that we you know figure that a default behavior for the bond is a way to encourage that you know you hold it yeah. for three years and then you get your bitcoins paid out Okay. And you know, at the three year level, at the three year mark, you can choose how to get paid, you know, liquid Bitcoin, on chain Bitcoin, or even a euro wire transfer if you really want. And you know, some investors may be not set up to handle Bitcoin, so it's a way for them to get the Bitcoin exposure as well. That makes sense. So, in the case of the Bitcoin bond, then um, the asset itself will be issued on liquid. Uh, I would hold that in a wallet, like a Blockstream wallet, for instance. And uh, as dividends are paid out, uh, I would be paid then in in liquid, or if I had a choice, I could be paid in some other uh, or some other asset, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, so the let's just clarify. So now we're moving on to the El Salvador Bitcoin bonds. So I just want to clarify: mm -hmm. the issuer is El Salvador, you know, the, the government itself, sure. and okay. uh, Blockstream is a technical advisor, and you know. Some we we acquired a hedge fund a while ago, Terdemista's uh, company, Admont Capital. So we're a hedge fund manager. So we have some financial modeling expertise in house, and so we you know did some of the modeling for this bond. But um, the issuer is El Salvador, and Bitfinex is in the mix as the bookmaker, and so they are working with the El Salvadorian government for a kind of security licensing, securities licensing. So potentially a new a new uh, jurisdiction that provides, you know, um, business friendly licensing terms for the uh, operation of an exchange. And so they're, they're working with the government to uh, get something set up there. And then they would, you know, provide the market like a market for you to trade these on. And, you know, they may be tradable on other markets and they're also a liquid AMP token. So you could withdraw them to a wallet as well yes. but i mean there's something you know there are a number of unusual things about this bond as far as normal sovereign bond issuances go like the makeup of the investors the venues and advisors involved are, of course more crypto centric at least on this first tranche 
and the use of capital is also unusual and we can talk about that. 